Kia ora. Thanks for being here today. We've made some pretty substantial progress in this course already. Um, we did all that stuff at the beginning about vectors, and then we learned about solving linear systems and a wee bit about how matrices work. At the moment, matrices to us is the shorthand for systems of equations, but over these next couple of weeks, we're going to learn that matrices are so much more than that, and also they go hand in hand with vectors very nicely. Right, so we're going to start um, by looking at a special kind of product between a matrix and a vector. But before we do that, let's just start with something that we know about, and we'll see if we can make sense of it that way. So we'll start off with a system of two equations and two unknowns. These will be x plus 2y equals 4, and 3x plus 5y equals 6. Now, we can just group those two equations together in a vector if we like, just like this. So we'll have x plus 2y and 3x plus 5y in the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, my vector will just be 4, 6. Now we're quite good at manipulating vector expressions now, so let's just expand out that left-hand side a wee bit, and we can write it down as x times the vector 1, 3, plus y times the vector 2, 5, and that equals 4, 6 still. If it's not that clear how we got there, just try combining the terms on the left-hand side together again into 1, and I think you'll get it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write the left-hand side down in a fundamentally new way. We're going to write it as a matrix 1, 2, 3, 5, that's just the two columns, the two vectors in that matrix, times the vector x, y of unknowns is equal to the vector 4, 6. Or for short, we can write a times x equals b. So this is called a matrix vector product. The matrix, which is a, is called the coefficient matrix here. And we interpret this product just like we did it in the previous step as a combination of the columns of the matrix. So essentially, when we multiply a vector by a matrix, we just multiply each column of the matrix by the corresponding entry of the vector, and then we add them all up. Now, the fancy name for this is called taking a linear combination of the columns of the matrix A. The only caveat is that the number of entries in the vector X must be the same as the number of columns of the matrix A. Otherwise, the matrix can be whatever size it likes. So let's just maybe slightly formalize that with the definition. Um, a matrix vector product. So we're going to take A to be an M, M rows, N columns matrix, and X to be a vector in Rn. Notice the same number of columns as entries in the vector, that's N. So we also write our matrix down as A is the matrix A1, A2 through to An, where the bold little A's are the columns of the matrix. Then the matrix vector product, A times X, we always write the matrix on the left, is defined to be AX equals X1 times A1 plus X2 times A2 all the way through to XN times AN. Now we mentioned, and we didn't mention, but the expression on the right is called a linear combination of the columns, so we'd better quickly define what that means as well. So definition of linear combination is, we're once again going to take N vectors in Rm, and then we're going to let x1 through to xn just be scalars, the numbers in R. Then a linear combination of the vectors a1 through to an is an expression of the form x1 times a1 plus x2 times a2 through to xn times an. Okay, it's just the sum of scalar multiples of those vectors. And the values x1 through to xn, we call these the coefficients of the linear combination. Okay, so we've got those two definitions out of the way. Now, we can now look at interpreting solving linear systems in a slightly new way. So we saw at the start of this video that a system of equations can be represented by an expression ax equals b. So now we can reinterpret this slightly, now that we know what a times x means. Another way of looking at solving this system is, can we build the vector b as a linear combination of the columns of the matrix A? And the coefficients x are the solutions to our problem, what we need to find to answer it. So we're going to spend a bit of time playing with this idea because it turns out to be fundamentally important when we try to describe things using vectors. So let's take a little bit of a break though. Who's played with Lego before? I particularly love it and I pretend that it's for my kids, but I personally love it myself. One of the super cool things about Lego is that with just a handful of bricks, you can build any number of different things. So you could, for example, build a nifty little car, or you could build a dainty little house, 
or maybe a mutant cat, or a hugely impractical Segway, etc, etc. Now if you were to build a catalogue of all of the possible models that you could build out of a bunch of Lego pieces, then this is kind of like the idea of what we call the span of a set of vectors. So if I have a bunch of vectors A1 through to AN, then the concept of building models out of them, just replace it with take different linear combinations of them. So the set of all possible linear combinations of A1 through to AN is called the span of A1 through to AN. And we can write this down mathematically as the span of A1 through to AN is just the set of x1 A1 plus x2 A2, these are scalar multiplications, plus all the way through to xn AN, and then colon, where x1 through to xn are in R. Just in case you haven't met this notation before, it's called set builder notation. The way to understand it is that you take all possible things after the colon, so for us that's all different choices of x's you could possibly dream up, then for each one of those choices you build the expression on the left of the colon, and then you collect them all together, at least conceptually, into a big massive set. Right, so let's have a look at the span of a particular set of vectors, an example. So we'll look at the span of the set of vectors 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, and 5, 0. So we're asking ourselves, what vectors can we build by taking linear combinations of these guys? Now if you think about that for a minute, every possible linear combination of these is going to just result in something 0, okay, something like k times 0. So maybe a question that might spring to mind is, do I actually need all of these vectors to build everything in my span, i.e. to build everything that looks like k0? Well actually no, I can get anything like that by just computing k times 1 0, no matter what k is. So I don't actually need the other vectors at all to build this span. So we could write that the span of 1 0 2 0 3 0 4 0 5 0 is equal to just the span of the vector 1 0 by itself. So there's a sense in which 1 0 is like a minimal or smallest set that we can build to describe the span that we're after. We can't go any smaller, so just to borrow some terminology that we'll learn about a bit later on, we'd say that 1 0 is a basis for that span. And we'd also say that the set is the span is one dimensional because there's only one vector in the basis. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We can't we don't want to go down this rabbit hole just now. We can't be that precise just yet. So we'll come back to these concepts a little bit later on in the course. Okay, now the thing about a, about this example though is that we could build any of the other vectors in the set, for example, 3, 0, by just taking combinations of other ones. For example, I could build 3, 0 as 3 times the vector 1, 0. And that's why we didn't really need the 3, 0. So if a vector can be formed out of other vectors, we can actually get rid of it from our basis. So the way to figure out whether that actually is true or not, whether we can build vectors out of other ones, is to look at the following expression, x1 times a1, just a linear combination, plus x2 times a2 through to xn times an equals 0. And let's notice I put the equals 0 on the right hand side here now. If one of them can be built out of the others, then what this means is that we could solve that equation just there with some of the x's being non-zero. So for example, if it were true that a3 was actually equal to 2 times a1 plus a2, then that would mean that 2 times a1 plus a2 minus a3 would equal 0. And a solution in the sense of that equation up there would actually be x1 equals 2, x2 equals 1, that's the thing in front of a2, x3 equals negative 1, and all the rest of the x's can just be 0. Then we're going to get 0, and we've got a non-zero solution, I mean, some of the x's are non-zero, and so that's, that's how that works. So it turns out that if we can't build some of them out of others, if it's not possible, then the only possible solution to this equation for x is x equals 0. Okay, because we can always make all the x's equal to 0, and that equation is going to be true. Um, if we can't build some of them out of others, that's the only way that equation can be true. And if that's the case, we say that the set of vectors is linearly independent. So let's just restate that as a slightly more formal definition, because it's one that you need to know really well. 
because we're going to be asking you to check that sets of vectors are linearly independent quite often. So let a1, a2 through to an be a set of vectors in Rm. We say that the set of vectors is linearly independent if the only solution to x1, a1 plus x2, a2 through to xn, an equals 0 is x1 equals x2 equals blah 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 equals xn equals 0. So if the only solution. Otherwise, we say the vectors are linearly dependent and a non-zero solution to this, the linear, the, 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 the linear combination is called a dependence relation. So practically speaking, to see if a set of vectors is linearly independent, then we need to actually attack that problem and see if we can solve it. So this is best done with an example. So are the vectors 1, 2, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 1, and 0, 5, negative 7 linearly independent? So let's try and solve this system. So let's just remember our chat from the start of the video. We can represent the system as a matrix with the columns, uh, vectors as columns. So we'll just repeat those steps again to remind ourselves how that worked. So the linearly independent expression, the one that we're going to start with, is x1 times 1, 2, negative 3, plus x2 times 2, negative 1, 1, plus x3 times 0, 5, negative 7 equals 0. And we're going to try and see if we can find non-zero solutions to this or not. So this can be represented in matrix form. We could write it as an augmented matrix, 1, 2, 0, 0, 2, negative 1, 5, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 7, 0. You can see I just put the vectors down as the columns and my 0 right hand side in there. Or we could write it in that matrix vector product form we talked about earlier. So 1, 2, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 5, negative 7 times x equals 0. Now a system with a zero right hand side like this is called a homogeneous system. So this is another one that you want to make a note of because we'll work with these systems quite often. And quite often we'll also drop the column of zeros in the augmented matrix because when you do row operations those zeros never actually change. So sometimes we just don't even bother writing them down if we, if we have the understanding that we're working with a homogeneous system. Okay, so let's take it to reduce durational on form, and it's also a good opportunity for us to practice using MATLAB or Octave. So I'm going to open up Octave. This is just the command line version of it. If you open up the full window, this is just your command window. So I'm just going to define my matrix A to be 1, 0, 2, 0. No, I'm not. It's going to be 1, 2, 0, 0, 2, negative 1, 5, 0 negative 3, 1, negative 7, 0. So I put semicolons at the end of each row. The entries actually in the row, you can separate them by commas or just have spaces, either will work. And there's my matrix A. Now to take it to reduce racial on form, it's super easy. I just type in R, R, E, F, open parenthesis, A, close parenthesis, and hit enter. And I see that, that the reduced racial on form is 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now you can go ahead and try that with Gaussian elimination or gauss jordan elimination yourselves as well to practice if you want, but it's nice to have MATLAB or Octave available to just check your calculations as you go. So what can we see? Well we can see that there is a free variable here. We've got a row of zeros at the bottom and it's 0 equals 0, so we're going to have some non-zero solutions. So my free variable is x3, it's got no pivot, so x3 equals t. Then I'm going to solve for x1 and x2. That gives me x2 equals t and x1 equals negative 2t. Again, you might want to pause this and just check you're happy with this. Um, so the general solution will therefore be my vector x is equal to t times negative 2, 1, 1. Notice that we don't get a constant term. This is always the case when we're solving a homogeneous system. So these vectors are therefore linearly dependent because we have a non-zero solution to the x's. And so a dependence relation, we just need to choose the value of t, we'll just take t equals 1, but you could take any, will therefore be negative 2 times 1, 2, negative 3, plus 1 times 2, negative 1, 1, plus 1 times 0, 5, negative 7, equals the vector 0. Uh, so just check the arithmetic, we've got negative 2 plus 2, that's 0, check. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, minus another 1 is negative 5, plus 5 is 0, that checks out. Um, negative 2 times negative 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, minus 7 is 0, so it all works out nicely, that's good. Alright, so it's almost time to stop for today, um, but we've still got a bit of ground to cover later on. 
So there's still some sort of outstanding questions like how do we find that minimal set of vectors that describes a span? The key takeaways for you from this lesson are first off, understanding what the span of a set of vectors actually means. Um, understanding what linearly what linear independence means, um, also in terms of how do you check vectors are linear, linearly independent, uh, and also homogeneous systems. Uh, it's, it's a thing you should be aware of, what these look like, and just be comfortable with the terminology. So if you're happy with these, you're doing really well. So take care, and we'll see you next time. Kakite anō.